Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over strategy to apply for jobs and get jobs in cybersecurity in 2026. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. Put comments if you have any, and let's get into it. Alrighty then, folks. So what we're going to do is go over a few things that I think work. And it worked for me and for people that I coach and I mentor. And those folks that follow this methodology, they definitely have more success than not. So number one, I always tell folks to stop mass applying. What does that mean? When you're sending 100 plus emails or 100 plus uh, uh, applications to companies, that's not very good, right? Start targeting companies and seeing where they're at and what technologies that they use and if you're interested in that, right? So my overall pick is around five to 10 max because remember, you wanna look at their tech stack. You wanna see if they have recent uh, breaches, any news on them. So it takes time to research each company as a whole, right? So look at the job description keywords, right? So tailor your resume to fit that so job, uh, job description and whatnot, right? So you don't, for, for an example, if you're applying for a penetration testing role and you worked as a security engineer for the last five years, so you have to touch on some pen testing stuff because without that, they're probably gonna overlook your resume, okay? So, and, and, and the little thing that I wanna mention really quick is, Hiring managers can spot generic resumes in a matter of seconds, right? So if you're just massing that resume, you know, over X amount of companies, you know, it's really easy to spot that because when I go through my mentoring program, I actually check out resumes, resume, uh, resume reviews, and I can tell from the very, very beginning that it's not, you know, it's very generic. The next step, the next thing to do is Build proof, not potential. What does this mean? So when you're applying for any job, if it's a SOC analyst, if it's a penetration testing role, if DFIR, incident response, forens whatever your IT, network engineering, system engineering, cloud, whatever you're doing or whatever you're willing to do, what I want you to do is build proof, right? Set up a home lab, build out Active Directory, build out a SOC you know, build out a cloud and AWS, Azure. And if you're doing pen tests, do pen testing, right? Prove to the world and to the employer that you're doing it, right? Because degrees, certifications alone are not gonna get you hired anymore. That's just, that's just reality, right? I know so many people, I know two personal friends that went through OFSEC, OSCP, OSWE, OSEP, I don't think they haven't gotten the DP route and they're having a hard time finding a job. So like I looked at their resume and I'm like, Hey man, like what you need to do is create a repo in GitHub. You know, some, some people like to stay anonymous, which I respect. Right. But if you need a job, if you want to get a job in this field, you have to show your, your potential. Right. So that's super, super important. So go on hack the box, do hack the box labs, go on, try hack me altered security, create your own home lab. There's so many resources out there to showcase what you know, not what you think you know, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So like I said, you know, what employees want to see in 2026, you know, like I said, your home labs, GitHub repos, you know, put some, if you're building out a new tool, like if you don't want to share it, don't share it, right? If you want to keep it to yourself, that's all up to you. But if you're looking for a job and you're looking to get into the field, sharing is caring and people like to see that, right? Write-ups and walkthroughs. That's, I remember when I started my YouTube channel and I was like, I want to start doing walkthroughs and, you know, write-ups weren't my thing. I don't like writing, right? In the sense of like doing screenshots, it's like doing a report on every single thing. That was not my thing, right? My thing was showcasing what I know and walkthroughs. And while I do my walkthrough, I do my documentation but my documentation was more for myself to refer to later or whatever. That's my notes, right? So do walkthroughs, do write-ups, whatever floats your boat, right? 
and then screenshots, diagrams, reports. Like if you have any sample reports that you want to share, never share anything that's client facing. Please don't ever do that. But if you have like a sample report or if you've done like PMPT or CPTS or any of these certifications, don't showcase theirs, but you have a template to work off so you can utilize that template and maybe walk through a walkthrough and then document that as a quote unquote pen test report. And then you can share that so people can see your writing skills as well. So yeah, so some examples that I want to mention here, are like some kind of AD attack path, right? SOC alert investigation, you can touch on that. External pen test report, like I just touched on. Cloud misconfigurations. So if you're touching the cloud, showcase some stuff that you found or yeah, show, you know, touch on some misconfigurations that you've seen in the cloud. I've done it when I was a Microsoft cloud engineer. Like I used to see a whole bunch of misconfigurations from the from the defensive side because my mind is offensive driven, right? Like an ASR rule in in Microsoft Defender and that's attack surface reduction. And I would see these misconfigurations and how the Mecca team is going to deploy this to so-and-so. And I'm like, hey man, I think you guys should do it this way. And this is because I think blah, blah, blah. Okay. So yeah, if you want to, you know, if you want to, if you can, right, this is what I want to mention too. If you can show you can do the job, they don't care if you can learn it, right? If you want to learn anything, they don't care how you learned it. If you learned it on hack the box, try hack me. They employees want to know if you can do the job. Just, just take that into perspective, right? And the next thing, and I want to touch on this because I think this is pretty critical because I, I, I've seen this recently and uh, treat LinkedIn like a job funnel. So what does that mean? A lot of people treat LinkedIn as like a social media, which is social media. It is a social media, but for 2026, if you're looking for a job, LinkedIn is not your friend for social media, right? This is a sales funnel. You want to use this as funneling uh, as much as you can to funnel opportunity for yourself. If you're a small business like myself, if you're a content creator, if you are whatever you are, use that as a stepping stone into your sales funnel um, steps, right? Lost my train of thought for a sec. It's really early here. I'm trying to do this before I start my day. So excuse me. But yeah, so like must do's, like these are some actions that you must do on a daily if you want to be successful in landing a job. And like I said, I'm taking, I'm reading all the steps that I do with my mentees, with the people I coach. Uh, you know, it sounds weird. I, I don't mention too much of my coaching on the internet, but I do mentor folks, right? And this is the things that I came up with that work. I've tried so many things that don't work. And then I stop manipulating that and seeing what does work and things that you need to change. If you have a LinkedIn, if you have this cool, if you don't, number one is your headline. What does this mean? The headline equals the role that you want plus the skills, right? So if you're, you know, looking for a penetration testing role, you say seeking penetration testing roles, I have X, Y, Z skill set, right? And then featured section. This is important because this is where you're going to put your projects and your labs. Like I said, if you're building home labs, if you're doing it in the cloud, document that and put it in the features section. Post at least two to three times a week, right? Because you want to get into that algorithm, start coming up on people's feeds, right? And then another thing that really I, I didn't really do much of, and I changed it and I seen my channel, not my channel, my page grow and more impressions and more engagement is comment on security leaders posts or just comment on posts, right? Because when you comment, because when you like, no one's going to click on the little three buttons and look at whoever liked your thing. Maybe the stalkers do, but I don't, to be honest. But if someone like does a comment, I'll look at the comments, right? So make sure, you know, you, you comment, you interact, that definitely shows uh, some kind of engagement. And then the last thing on this section is DM recruiters and hiring managers with intent, right? So if you intend to apply for a job, do it with intention. Don't just copy and paste the generic stuff to, you know, write up something, copy and paste to a million people. Please don't do that. That's not, that's not going to go well. Okay. So 
because like I said, <laughs> I want to mention this as well. This is the last thing I want to mention. Like if recruiters cannot tell what you do in like three to five seconds, you're already lost, right? Recruiters, hiring managers, if they can't tell, like if you just put cybersecurity professional, I had that on because I was, I did it for on, on purpose for my own thing. But like, if you're looking for whatever specific role, specify what you're looking for. Okay. And I know I'm going on a rant, but I'm going to try to make this as quickly as possible. A couple more, a couple more things I want to mention. So this is a good one. And, and this really, really helped me like help mentees, uh, because people network and they stop bragging about what they know. Don't do that. Network like a hacker, not like a bragger. What do I mean by that? So when you go to conferences, right? You go to conferences, meetups, like I don't like to brag. I I'm not the person to brag. I don't, I like to stay humble. I like to stay low key. I just love to help people and see people's ch lives change. That's literally, I think why I'm put on this planet. Yeah. I have my, 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 my crazy side and I have my loving side and whatever, but my ultimate goal in life, not only about YouTube and InfoSec pad or ISP or whatever, it's just about seeing people's life move forward, right? When I used to bowl, I still bowl. But when I was bowling, I would actually take my time on a Saturday morning, whoever wants to learn two-handed bowling and do it for three to five hours and teach where to put your mark, how to throw the ball, blah, blah, blah. When I skateboarded, I would do skating lessons. So I always was giving back to my neighborhood, my community or whatever, and whatever, you know, whatever passion I have. So this is not new to me you know, the whole giving back. It's, it's been like that from the jump when I was a kid. So, so yeah. So the next section here is most cybersecurity jobs in 2026 is filled before they're posted. Why? Because some, some companies have to post their job just because it's for policy and compliance or whatever to have outsiders apply, but they already sometimes, if I meet someone, say for example, I, I, I want to uh, network like a hacker, right? I want to go to a conference, maybe a local B-side or DEF CON or Black Hat or whatever, whatever it may be. And I'm saying, I go to the company's booth and I say, hey, are you guys hiring? Um, no, we're not really hiring right now. What are you, why are you looking for a job? Yeah, I'm looking for, I want to stick on the pen testing roles, right? I'm looking for a pen testing role. Um, I have five to eight years experience. I have these certifications. I've done these kind of labs. I've worked here, there, everywhere, wherever. And I find your company intriguing because of whatever, right? Like, like, you know, whatever, if it's hack the box, oh, I love your labs. If it's try hack me, I love how you do your rooms, whatever TCM. I love how your training is. Your certification was realistic, whatever the case may be, right? So just have something to follow up with. So where to network, right? Where can you do this? You can go to, like I said, local B-sides are awesome. They're cheap and they're local, right? So yeah, sometimes you have some outsiders, but most of the time it's a lot of local folks, a lot of local companies, DEF CON, local meetups, Discord or Slack communities, capture the flag events. These are all places where you can network. So it's definitely, definitely cool. What not to say, right? This is something that I tell, like I said, I tell my folks, can you help me get a job? Don't say that, please. Please, please, pretty please, right? This is an absolute no-go. And I actually have a big X on this in my little presentation. So, and what to say, what can you say then? What skills matter most for your team right now? Like I'm really good at Active Directory. I'm really good with internals and externals, but I'm not so good with embedded or hardware hacking. Is that something you're looking for? Can it, where can I bring my skills to, right? So, you know, your network is the fastest exploit, pretty much. This is, this is the truth. And the fifth thing here I have on my screen is pick the right entry point, right? What does this mean? So cybersecurity is not entry level. I'm going to say that right now. You can have an entry level SOC, but it's not entry level. But here are some entry level points, right? This is the best path, the best path for you for 2026, in my opinion. If you get a help desk job, you can pivot into a SOC position. If you're working at a SOC, you can pivot into a DFIR permission, uh, position, sorry, not permission. IT, if you're working in IT, maybe you can pivot to cloud security or cloud engineering. If you're a junior pen tester today, go to a mid-level. Maybe if you want to get into red teaming, touch on some red teaming topics. 
Stop applying for roles that you're not ready for. Please, I, I know people say just apply and you can learn later. Please don't do that. You're just going to set yourself up for failure. I've seen it. I, I, I did recommend that early on in my career. I'm like, you know, if you have your CCNA and they, they're saying you have, you know, you have to know, you know, CCNP level stuff, just, just apply. And they would apply. They would get into a network like, oh, we have to set up VRFs. We have to set up BGP. We have to set up OSPF, blah, 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 blah. And like, oh, shit, I just know about show VLAN brief, show IP interface brief. I don't know how to do this, blah, 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 because I only have my CCENT back then. You know, so just just apply for things that you're ready for, please. And then master interviewing by storytelling. This is the last thing I have on my on my notes for today. So technical knowledge matters, but communication matters more. All right. Use this formula, right? Please use this formula. Problem, tools used, decision made, and outcome, right? So Definitely, definitely work on that. That's definitely a a good thing. For an example, I can give you an example. Like, um, I detected a suspicious a PowerShell activity using Defender logs, correlated that into the SIM, and then isolated the host and documented the incident. That's just like for an example. Okay, so if you can't explain it, you don't understand it. That's pretty pretty much it. And I guess this is the last thing: leverage mentorship and communities, right? So if you want to land that job, you can reach out to me. You can do something with me as well. I'm more than happy to help you with whatever I can. So the fast, the fastest path to get a job in 2026 again in this department is mentors, coaches, study groups, accountability. You know, most people fail because they're not they're they're just learning alone. And I know some people love to learn alone, but when you're beginning your journey, please get with folks that are like minded and then just shoot the smack with them. And you can pivot off each other, you can learn off each other, and and that speeds up the process. Trust me, I know firsthand. So speed in cybersecurity comes with guidance and not guessing. So that's pretty much it. And that's all I got for today. And I hope you found this informative. If there's anything that I missed or anything that you wanna learn about, please put it in the comments below. Thank you so much and happy 2026. I love you all and I'll see you guys in the next one.